Hey there. Hey there, hi there, ho there. We're back again. Salvation by grace. I think this is the third teaching. Uh, last time I dealt with the Pharisee. Okay, now we're going to get to the, um, the publican. Now we're in Luke 18, okay, verses 9 through 14. Luke 18, 9 through 14. I'll say that again slowly. Luke 18. Oh, you get it. Luke 18, 9 through 14. Okay, now we're going to go on. Notice I, I've got a hat now, so, so I'm wearing it. People say, how can you be preaching in a hat, man? Don't you, don't you know you shouldn't have a hat on? <laughs> no, I don't know any better. I don't know any better. Okay, let me see. What verse was I on? Oh yeah, I was talking about I was talking about need to get to the tax collector. That's verse 13. Okay? We come to the tax collector in verse 13, the publican. That's the tax collector. He was standing afar off. Now remember the Pharisees was judging himself with other people and saying, Look, I'm holy and just and pure. I'm alright. I'm cool, man. Look what I do. I tithe. You know? I give money. Boy, you tithe. You're accepted in a lot of churches. doesn't matter what you do. As long as you tithe, they'll give you the thumbs up. It's not about money. It's about a personal relationship, a fellowship with Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's go on. <laughs> and then he was talking about how he uh, suffered for God. He said, I, I fast. You know, In other words, look at me. I do a lot. Man, I, that's why I'm righteous. Look what I do. No, let's go to the tax collector now. He's the publican. He's standing afar off. He would not lift up so much, verse 13, he wouldn't lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now, this is amazing. We have the one who's looking so holy and just and pure, this person that's very religious, a Pharisee, and everybody's like, oh, ah, boy, he knows God, la, la, you know. And then we have this tax collector who is known for being evil. And what does he do? One of them's filled with pride. The other one's filled with what? Humility. Notice his humbleness. Notice his body language, standing afar off. He didn't even go all the way into, where were they, the church, because he felt so ashamed of himself. He was ashamed. He saw himself the way he was. He was ashamed of his life and the things that he had done, that he stood afar off. He wouldn't even look up. He wouldn't lift his eyes to heaven. He was humble before God. He had nothing to boast about. He had nothing to bring God but himself. And he knew that that was not holy. That was not a good offering. But he came to God anyway. And he smote his breast. breast. See, the Bible talks about smiting the breast in the Old Testament, right? Many times um, they would tear their garments, uh, throw dust in the air, or sackcloth and ashes it was a way of them saying I'm sorry God for what I have done or it could mean how disgusted they were over the situation that they found themselves in but in this case it was a sign of repentance it was a contrite heart it says in Psalm 51 verse 17 the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart, these, O oh God, you will not despise. A broken and contrite heart. Now, contrite means to feel uh, remorse or repentance. You feel guilty. You feel sorry about what you've done. That's the contrite heart. It says, these, O God, you will not despise. The tax collector, a sinful man, that he was, he cried out to God. He prayed, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He didn't try to hide behind a false mask, but acknowledged his condition. 
you see that a person cannot s accept the antidote if they don't believe that they've been bitten. If a snake bites you and you don't believe you've been bitten by a snake, you're not going to receive the antidote of the snake bite. Jesus is the antidote of the snake bite in the Garden of Eden. There was a snake bite going on there. And I have a lot to say about that. What time is it? Yeah, we're doing good. The snake bite of the devil. Okay? There is an antidote. It's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. The bread and the blood. I'm not talking about transubstantiation. I'm talking about the real blood and his real body and his sacrifice that he did already for us. Not something I'm waiting for, something I already have, something that belongs to every Christian. It's been done. So, the publican, he didn't try to hide behind a false mask. It's time to pull the masks off. It's time to acknowledge our condition. Okay, now I remember one time when I was, uh, I was lifting weights. I was in Tacoma, Washington. I was lifting weights by myself in a gym, very small gym, very nice. I was lifting weights and there was one person in the gym that was the uh, attendant and they were on the phone. Um, and while I was doing uh, bench presses, I was just um, done and just laying back, looking up and there was a monitor there, a TV screen, and it was talking about a man who had been condemned um, judge sentenced for something like 20 murders and I said it was just me and God and that TV and the other person the other on the phone but I said to God can that man be saved and you know what he said now I know it was God he said do you hear from God yeah I hear from God I don't hear it in my ears, I hear it in my heart. He speaks to us in our heart. Matter of fact, the more you hear of God's word, the more you'll hear that he's speaking to you all the time. We're just not listening because we don't know how or we don't want to hear. But anyway, to make a short story longer, um, I said, can that man be saved? The Lord said to me, you're no different. Ba-boom. I'm no different. But wait, I haven't killed people. Just wanted to. Ah! <laughs> but putting aside the joke, honestly, we're no different than anybody on this earth. We all come to God in the same position. Ungodly, unholy, unjust. Nothing we can do or have done will stop us from being accepted by God if we accept Jesus Christ and his work on the cross. Does that mean that once his work on the cross is accepted in your life, you can go ahead and do whatever you want? Well, there's two answers to that. To do what you want. Your wants now change naturally. See, you have two minds. When you're born again, you have your mind, physical mind, you're thinking, but you also have the mind of Christ. And as we renew our mind, our mind now becomes like the mind of Christ. And we put aside the old. It's a natural thing that occurs as we focus on the things of God. What you focus on, you empower. You're going to hear that a lot from me because it's an absolute truth. I've seen it change my life and thousands of others. What you focus on, you empower. I'm going to get close to stopping here. All we got was just a little bit about the publican. But I want to say something here. What you focus on, you empower. If you focus on the power of Satan, you will empower that. He has no power or authority over you. He has no strength. Jesus has defeated the devils, the demons, Satan himself. They are defeated. They are under his feet. He is the body. I'm, he is the head. We are the body. We're a part of him. Okay, Jesus isn't the feet. We're the feet, the body. We, the church of the living God, we stand on 
all the works of the devil. The enemy is under our feet. What you focus on, you empower. Focus on the truth of Jesus Christ and what he has done and his victory, and you'll be more than a conqueror. You know why you're more than a conqueror? More than a conqueror. How do you, if you've conquered somebody, how are you more than a conqueror? Because you didn't have to conquer them. You entered into the conquering power and victory that Jesus Christ has won for you. That's how you're more than a conqueror. You didn't have to do it through your blood, sweat, and tears. You did it through his blood, sweat, and tears. His victory, his strong arm has been given to you, and you have the victory. That's good news, man. The devil is under your feet. The only power and authority that he has is what you have given to him by believing that he has power and authority. Till next time, God bless you.